Okay, so the next section we're going to look at is trigonometry. Okay, it's kind of geometry with a three at the start. So the, basically, it's the geometry of triangles. It's, it's trigonometry, basically. So we know it's dealing with triangles. So let's look at the most simple aspect of trigonometry, which is this Greek guy. And don't have a go at me if I spell his name wrong. Pythagoras. Now, our man Pythagoras, back in ancient Greek, had uh, a bit of a clever guy, had a bit of a theorem. Okay, and this is all to do with triangles. <clears throat> so, it's Pythagoras, and our basic trigonometry is all to do with one specific type of triangle. I did tell you earlier we were going to be coming back to this type of triangle, and that they were incredibly exciting. So here we go. It's our... Right angled triangle. Remember, right angled triangle has a right angle in it. So, what Pythagoras did, first he gave all the sides of the triangle silly names. <clears throat> he called this side the hypotenuse. Again, that may well be spelt wrong, but it doesn't matter because we always shorten it to hype. So, that's the hypotenuse, the longest side. Okay, and then we've got this bottom side, or the adjacent side, we call it. Okay, and we call this side the opposite side. Okay, um, basically it's all because we. This is our main. This is the main angle we're interested in. This is our clever angle, and this angle we call theta. Okay, it's another silly Greek letter. So that that's one of these. It's basically a, a zero with a squiggly line in the middle. I don't know if you can... Basically, that's our, what we call a theta, and we normally use that to denote angle. Now, Pythagoras isn't really concerned about angles, but I just wanted to show you that, because that's why we call this the opposite. It's opposite theta. This is adjacent to theta. It runs alongside the theta, and hypotenuse is always just the longest side. So hypotenuse is always the longest side. So, what our clever man Pythagoras said was that you can calculate, if you've given two sides of a right angle triangle, you can calculate what the other side must be. Okay? And the way we'll look at this, I'm actually going to rub that off because I want to draw it more accurately. The way we'll look at this <coughs> is we'll draw a triangle. But I'm going to make one side three, I'm going to make the opposite three units long and the adjacent four units long. Okay? I don't know if this is what Pythagoras did, but it's what I do. So this side is going to be three units long. Okay? So let's mark them on there, the units on that one. So, so it's three units long. And this side is going to be four units long. Okay, so it's not the units on there as well. This is as accurate as I can do it on this board. Okay, so we know that that's three and that's four. Yep, right. Well, let's look at how long that would make this side. Okay, so how long is this side going to be? Well, we know these two sides, so we should be able to work out this side. What Pythagoras essentially said was, if you draw some squares on here, so if I make this side into a square, this side, this, both these, one side of a square, you'll see what I mean. I'll draw the squares on. Okay, I'm going to draw these on in green, just uh, so we can see that they're different to the triangle. So this needs to be four units long. Okay, and again, we need to go four units on here. Okay, and again, four units there. 
And we're going to do the same here, but this obviously is our three unit square. Oops, sorry, I've gone too long. I don't have it on the wrong line. This is our three unit square. No, it's not a very straight line. Okay, and this is our three unit square, roughly. Okay, so what are the areas of these going to be? Well, let's stop using this for now. What well, the areas are going to be, let's draw it on there. So we've got three lines across here. We've got three lines down here, haven't we? So the area of this one is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So the area of that is nine. What about this one? Well, the area of that It's going to be 16, isn't it? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 16. Okay, what Pythagoras said was the square you draw here will have the area of these two squares added together. So he said, if we call this H, this A, and this O, he said O squared plus A squared. Actually, let's call this B, slightly nicer. He said b squared plus a squared will equal h squared. So let's, have look, let's have a look, see if that works with our 3, 2 and 3. Okay, let's have a look. I'm just going to get rid of that for the moment. So, this should then in theory be 5 units long. Please. So if I draw a square, I'll, I'll get, I'm going to get rid of this as well, my friend. You're just going to have to remember what the opposite of those are. So if I draw my square on here, it's not a very good square, I'm afraid. I actually find that the area of that is. Let's have a look. Here, that is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so we don't have 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 24, 25. So the area of that one is 25. So is he right? Does a squared plus b squared equal h squared? Well, 9 plus 16 equals 25. So he's right, these two squares added together make this square, which tells us that Pythagoras is correct. And this actually works for any right angle triangle, not just three, one with sides three, four, and five. And we can see from this that if we have our triangle, our right angle triangle, remember, we have our right angle triangle, so we've got 3, 4, and h. And h actually equals the square root of a squared plus b squared. Okay? So that's how we work out a side. We add the square of the two sides together and then take the square root. But that's Pythagoras' theorem is this one here, which is nearly that the hypotenuse squared equals equals a squared plus b squared. Hypotenuse squares equals the sum of the square of the other two sides. That's the lovely eloquent way of saying it. That's the normal way of saying it. So let's have a look. Let's do some examples. So we've got something here where we've got, I don't know, 9 here and 12 here. So what's the hypotenuse? That's going to be a question mark. Well, we know that h squared equals 9 squared in this case plus 12 squared. So h squared equals 81 
plus 144. So h squared equals 225. So h equals the square root of 225, which equals, I can't do that in my head, so let's use a calculator, equals 15. I should have been able to do that in my head. So it equals 15. And it's that straightforward. Let's do another couple of examples. Okay, well, the two examples. So this time we've got a triangle. Okay, and this time we know H. We know that H is 21. And we know the opposite. We know that the opposite, in this case, is only going to be 11. What is A going to be? So, same thing. H squared equals A squared plus B squared. Right, we could put the numbers in and then do some rearranging. We could just rearrange it now. I like rearranging when we've just got the letters in and then putting the numbers in. So what we do, we need to find A squared. So what are we going to want to do? Let's go back to our algebra. Now, you all know what to do. We need to take B squared away from both sides. Okay? So we end up with H squared minus B squared equals A squared. I'm going to leave it like that now because I could put a thing, a, a square root sign around both sides, but we'll just do that at the end. But I want to do the, the bulk of the rearranging early on. So, we find that 21 squared minus 11 squared equals A squared. So, 21 squared is 441. Take away 11 squared is 121 equals a squared so that's 320 equals a squared so a will therefore equal the square root of 320 which is 17.5 Okay, and that's how we work out one of the sides. Okay, we carry on doing these examples till the cows come home, but we all know that you doing the examples is going to give us the best results. So go and have a practice of some Pythagoras questions, and we'll move on to some more advanced trigonometry.